do you need to update your graphics card for Counter-Strike 2? I've got four high-end GPUs from across the ages. We're gonna test the frame rates inside of Global Offensive and then compare that to Counter-Strike 2. I can't get over the size comparison between these two cards. No, I'm not compensating for anything. Now that we have a completely remade map for the Source 2 engine instead of just a port, we can finally test what performance is gonna look like in the new game. While the old Source engine was bottlenecked to single-core CPU performance, the new Source 2 engine is GPU bottlenecked. I didn't know how to get the GPU out. So I was jamming it with the screwdriver, but it turns out it's a button. As it comes out, I, I think I broke it. I'm defining an acceptable minimum threshold as frames never dropping below your monitor's refresh rate. Mine is 240 hertz, so I'm looking for frame rates that consistently stay above 240. But I believe that 120 hertz is good enough. If you only have 60, upgrading to 120 will change your life. I tested three different graphics settings in both Global Offensive and Counter-Strike 2. First, I mimicked a pro player's settings, 4x3, 12 1280 by 960 resolution on low graphics. Then I did 1080p on low graphics, and finally 1080p on high graphics. I tested frame rates just standing there where a lot of stuff had to render, then I added three bots of smoke and a Molotov, and then I walked around the map recording the lowest frame rate and the highest frame rate that I managed to get. So we get an idea if there's gonna be frame drops or if certain areas are gonna lower your FPS to a point where it's going to be a problem when you're playing. I used an i9-13900K so that we could ignore or CPU bottlenecks because it owns. First, we have the GTX 980. This was released in 2014. It was a great graphics card to have early on in Global Offensive. And this is the first high-end graphics card that I ever owned. Before that, I was a poor college student just getting what I could get. So it was very important to me. No surprise, it performed well and above my threshold for every test in Global Offensive. The lowest the frame rate ever dropped was 290 frames per second, which was during the effects test at the highest possible graphics settings. It was able to achieve 953 frames per second at best, which is kind of insane. Remember that in Global Offensive, the CPU is doing the heavy lifting. The difference between the 4x3 resolution versus the 16x9 was about 15%, so not a lot. I don't think think turning your resolution down to 4x3 or lowering your resolution really is that big of a deal if you're just looking at frames. But from low graphics settings to high graphics settings, it was significant. About a 50% drop. Then we look at Counter-Strike 2, and this thing struggled. The difference in frames from Global Offensive to CS2 was about a 45% drop. And then the difference when we turned the graphics up in CS2 was another 50% drop. By the end of it, I was getting frame rates near 100 FPS at the highest graphics settings, which I don't think is good enough. In practice, if you pair this with a less powerful CPU and in-game performance where 10 players are running around throwing utility, it'd be much worse. This is concerning when you realize this is a high-end graphics card. Counter-Strike is a worldwide free-to-play game. A lot of people who play it may not have the resources to upgrade their GPU, so I could imagine it would suck if you get 60 FPS in CSGO and then you get 40 FPS in CS2 and you're pretty much forced to upgrade because for my understanding Counter-Strike 2 is replacing Global Offensive. But it is inspiring to know that if you play on low graphics settings like most competitive players, you're still gonna get acceptable performance in Counter-Strike 2 from a nine-year-old graphics card. And remember, crypto crashed, so you can probably get a much better card than this secondhand for really cheap right now. Next up, we have the GTX 1080 Ti, a legendary graphics card, only nerds get back plates. This thing blew me away when we were testing. It was released in 2017, and spoiler alert for the other cards, it performed better in Global Offensive than the next two cards, including the RTX 4090. I'm wondering if Global Offensive is just better optimized for the GTX 1080 Ti, or if this is the card where we hit the ceiling, everything else is CPU. Then we get to Counter-Strike 2, and compared to the other cards at low graphics settings, it was still comparable, only slightly worse when there were a lot of effects on the screen. Where the GTX 1080 Ti had trouble was when we cranked the graphics settings up to max. Then we get a significant drop in frame rate. For example, it got 593 FPS just standing there at low graphics, cranked the graphics up, and it dropped to 300 FPS, which that's really good still, but there's a drop. What this tells me is that for higher graphics settings, Counter-Strike 2 is actually using the graphics card, which I think is a good thing. You're giving you, the player, a choice. You can upgrade your GPU if you want to, you'll get more frames and you can turn the graphics settings up and you can get increased performance, or 
you don't have to. Most competitive players play on the lower settings anyway. During the effects test at high graphics in Counter-Strike 2, it did drop below my minimum acceptable threshold down to 200 frames per second, which let's be honest, that's fine. And you're probably not gonna play at the high graphics settings anyway. One thing I began to notice here is that Counter-Strike 2 had far more consistent frame rates. Even when you're just standing there in Global Offensive, the frame rates would jump around wildly. They'd go up by 40 frames and then down by 60 frames. In Counter-Strike 2, they only varied by like one or two FPS if the same stuff was going on. This is a hint to me that the Source 2 engine is much better designed and Counter-Strike 2 is just better made. The other thing I noticed, which is kind of anecdotal, Counter-Strike 2 felt better at low frame rates than Global Offensive did. You almost didn't notice that the frame rate was lower. Next up, the RTX 2080 Super. This thing came out in 2019. I think some of them came out earlier than that. I was very disappointed in this card, especially in the Global Offensive test. It performed worse than the 1080 Ti. Maybe I screwed something up. That's very, very possible. I was jamming it with the screwdriver. But when it came to Counter-Strike 2, when we turned the graphics settings up, it did perform better than the 1080 Ti. I would say it's good enough for Counter-Strike 2. But if you don't settle for good enough, if only the best will do, there's this thick girl. Why did I say that? The RTX 4090, this thing came out in 2022. It's the most insane graphics card I have ever seen by a lot. She's gluttonous. It blocks one of the other PCIe slots in my computer. It requires three to four eight pin connectors. It owns, and based on our test in Counter-Strike 2, it really does own Counter-Strike 2. So I was concerned that it wasn't level because it doesn't show it as being level. But then when I put this on the table, uh, the table's not level. For Global Offensive, it was way, way, way overkill. It performs pretty much the same as the GTX 1080 Ti, but once I launched Counter-Strike 2 at the highest graphics settings, Oh my goodness. Without overclocking on factory settings, the lowest the frame rate dropped to was 446 frames per second. The highest it got at the highest possible graphic settings in Counter-Strike 2, a game that isn't even out yet, was 650 frames per second. It was a consistent, smooth, fantastic experience. I will name her Bertha because she's a big girl. If you're a rich person and you don't mind your room being five to 10 degrees hotter and you have a good surge per Protector, there's the RTX 4090. It's stupid. It's overkill. You don't need it, but I love it. When it comes to Counter-Strike 2, you have options. You don't have to upgrade. You can play on low graphics settings and get by just fine. But if you want a premium experience, you can upgrade and it will actually do something now, unlike Global Offensive. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm the War Owl and I still have no closer.